Hello and welcome to Droix. Today we are checking out the eagerly awaited revision of earlier this year's Aya Neo. We will be unboxing it, taking a look at the device's features and comparing the updates to the original model. We will then run some system and gaming benchmarks to compare it with the latest i7 1195G7 GPD and 1X Player 1S models. Let's start with the unboxing. There's some nice packaging we will briefly look at. Pause the video if you want to read it fully. Underneath the information covering there is the IA Neo which we will show more detail shortly. Lifting out the protective foam reveals a quick start guide. There is a USB Type-C cable. As standard it comes without a charger but we will include a Droix branded 64 watt charger as shown on screen. And last but not least are two USB Type-C to USB Type-A converters which you can use to connect peripherals to such as a keyboard and mouse. The IO Neo measures 10.4 by 4.17 by 0.79 inches and weighs 648 grams. It has a 7 inch H IPS multi touch screen and it runs in a 1280 by 800 resolution. On the left side are clickable left analog stick and a classic D pad. Below are four buttons which are the rumble on and off toggle, home button, start and select. On the right side are four gaming buttons and the right analog stick. There are four shortcut buttons which are desktop, task manager, escape and to toggle the on-screen keyboard. Along the top we have left to right shoulder and trigger buttons. There are power and volume buttons followed by the 3.5mm headphone jack. There are two USB Type-C ports. The second is a full port which allows you to connect peripherals to such as a hub. On the bottom there is a second full USB Type-C port which can also be used to connect peripherals to. Let's take a brief look at the tech specs and differences between the original and new models. It's running the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U with 6 cores and 6 threads up to 4 GHz. It comes with 16 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM running at 4266 MHz. There's 1 terabyte of fast PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD inside. The immediate difference between the two is the case. The plastic see-through case has been replaced with a more premium finished moulded case that looks and feels far better. This is the dark star colour and it's also available in a light moon colour. The trigger buttons have also received an upgrade. The original had digital triggers and these have been replaced with analogue triggers. It's great for racing games for example as it provides greater control. The buttons have also received an upgrade with improvements to the manufacturing process to ensure the buttons print does not fade over time. They also feel nicer when pressed compared to the original. The cooling system has been replaced with a new heat dissipating dual copper tube. This will provide faster and more stable heat removal. A quick reminder that you can order the IA Neo from us at droix.co.uk. Ship turn supported from London UK, you receive one year's full warranty and excellent customer service. We currently have a sale for 10% off and after October the 11th you can use the discount code IOTNEO5 for 5% off for the rest of the month. Learn more and order yours at droix.co.uk. We are running the benchmarks at the IONEO's default TDP which is 15 watts. We will be showing the 20 watt scores in the benchmark results in order to compare it to the GPD and 1X player which are default at 20 watts. 
Passmark performs a series of tests on the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to push it to the maximum for an artificial performance rating under full load. The IONEO scores 4451 with around average scores on the tests and above average on the storage speed. Overall they are good scores above the i7 models. PCMark performs a series of tests on overall usage for tasks such as web browsing, media consumption, image and video editing and much more. It provides a good gauge on overall day-to-day -day tasks. The IONEO scores 4861 with good scores across the tests, but they are not higher than the i7 based handhelds. 3D Mark tests the CPU and GPU for 2D and 3D capabilities. This gives us an indication of how it will perform for gaming. The IONEO scores 1110. It's above average for similar CPU and GPU configurations and it could go higher with some TDP increases. Next we will check out some game benchmarks. We are running these benchmarks with the same settings as we have done with the Intel based devices to ensure fairness. We start with Forza Horizon 4 which is running at 720p with the default ultra settings and a target frame rate of 60fps. The IONEO finishes the benchmark with a score of 34fps. Next we have the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark running at 1920x1080 on the high desktop quality settings. The IONEO scores 2876 with a rating of slightly low. You would still be able to play the game just fine but using a small mix of lower settings you would have better performance. We finished the gaming benchmarks with Street Fighter V running at 1920x1080 at maximum quality settings. At the end of the first match there is an average frames per second of 26. Will it be higher or lower than Intel model handhelds? Let's first have a reminder of the benchmark results. The scores for the default 15 watts TDP are shown as well as the tests for 20 watts to keep it more in line with the Intel based devices. There are some improvements using 20 watts TDP in games that take advantage of multi-core CPUs, especially with Forza Horizon 4 seeing a very good increase in FPS. Now let's take a look at the benchmark results and compare them with the GBD Win3, GBD Max 2021 and the One X Player 1S. The scores in the brackets are the 20 watt scores for the GPD WinMax 21 and IONEO. Comparing the scores we can see that the One X Player 1S still remains overall the best performing device at 20 watts. In terms of performance versus price difference, compared to the One X Player 1S, the IONEO at 15 watts performs as much as 30% slower for 8.5% less price. So is the IONEO worth buying? While it is a good handheld in its price range, by spending a little more you could buy a more powerful Intel based handheld. Or if you wanted to sacrifice some battery power, you could simply increase the TDP to a higher amount to get more into that target performance. Ignoring the price differences, the IONEO itself is just the right size for a handheld gaming PC. It is larger than the GPD Win 3 and smaller than the One X Player 1S, so it's not quite pocket portable, but far more convenient to carry it around in a bag and take it out for gaming sessions while travelling when compared with the One X Player. I like the IONEO a lot. It feels very comfortable to handle and play games on, and it's not too heavy when holding it unaided, for example resting on your lap or table. The screen size is also just right, large enough to be able to see smaller text, which you can't always see on the Win3. Stay tuned for the second part of our video, in which we will test some popular and recent Windows games to show how they perform. 
That wraps up this review video. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back soon.